Hi, I'm Burl Workman, and we're talking teams. Hang out with us today as we really get into how to hire and find A players. If you're looking to grow your business, you're looking to grow your team, let's do it right. So stay tuned for more information about how to hire great team players. So hey guys, I am Aiden. I am from the company Wise Hire. So you might have heard of us, especially if you are a Wise Hire client or potentially a Workman client. So uh, Wise Hire is hiring tech specifically built for small businesses, specifically like really, really focused on helping folks in real estate hire. So making it easy to post a job, manage candidates as they're coming through and interview them and make sure that you know who you want to talk to because we have FISC and screening questions. So um, I go back with small businesses way, way back. My, my career really has been focused around helping small businesses uh, really maximize their business. I, I worked um, with uh, retail folks for a really long time in e-commerce um, and then also worked in small business accounting and bookkeeping for a long time uh, and have been at Wise Hire now for nearly eight months learning a lot of ins and outs about hiring. Uh, so I give everyone here a lot of credit. If you have gone through the hiring cycle, it is such a big challenge. So we really want to demystify and make it a lot easier to be able to hire the folks that you want. So think of me here as um, your, your guide rather than the one with all the answers. I'm here to make sure that we can make the most out of Denise um, and have a conversation that's really going to give you what you're looking for. So um, let's, let's hear from Matt now. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome. I'm so excited to be doing this with, with Denise and Workman and, and really helping put this together. Um, I've been with Wise Hire. I'm, I'm one of the new faces. I've been here for about a month now. Uh, it's been amazing thus far. And, you know, I'm, I'm heading up the, the marketing effort for our, our partners like Workman to be able to, you know, get the most value out of, out of our partners and education to uh, you guys, uh, the real estate industry and the different industries that we work with. I uh, put it in chat. I'm based here in San Diego, um, but uh, yeah, I'm here. Feel free to reach out via email or phone. I'm always happy to talk, bounce ideas off of, and and just kind of get to know you guys. Welcome. That's me, right, Aiden? Hey, there we go. Good afternoon, wherever you're showing up, whether it is Canada, the East Coast, Midwest, or the Pacific Coast. My name is Denise Klein, and I'm a team leader for the Klein Team NV. I always like to say I put the Klein and the Klein Team, and I have been in real estate for over 38 years. Uh, whether it is running a national title company sales team and the impact that we had on real estate agents or getting uh, my life and acting as a single agent, um, moving into a team leader. It's always for me about um, value, value, value. So I promise you, if you are on this call today, value is what we are going to deliver. Whether you're just starting out in the process of building a team or you are already a, have a team, what we want to hear from you, and I'd love to see you put it in the chat below, what is the most important takeaway that you have today? What are your expectations? What's at stake for you in your business? And this is all about the admin. And I'll just tell a really brief story. I was vice president of sales and marketing for Stuart Title when we made the decision that I was going to leave that and go into real estate. And my husband was totally cool with me leaving a job that I had a very substantial salary and commission and all of that, totally behind it. And then when I went in that day and I told my assistant, hey, look, I'm leaving. She said, Denise, I can't be here without you. So without any consideration to any partners in my life, I said, of course you're coming with me. And I made the best decision I ever made to hire my assistant early on. Now from a coaching perspective with Workman Success, we're not encouraging that behavior. There are some you know, KPIs that we wanna have in place. There's some opportunities, but I stand here in certainty that your admin or what we call a client care um, is the most important decision that you could make. And how do we do that to make a bigger impact in the lives of the people that we serve? And so with that, Aiden, it's back to you. 
Awesome. That was such a great setup, Denise, because really we we are here to talk about how admins can help make the most of your business. So before we dive into some of the juicy bits here, I really want to understand who we have in the audience. So um, Dakota, can you help us with the poll here? We want to know whether you already have an admin on your team. And I just saw somebody in the chat post that they are a client care coordinator. So if that's you, just click yes on this poll that's coming up. Or let us know if you do not yet have an admin and this is why you're here, you're trying to figure out um, who and how you can bring somebody onto your team to really support your business growth. All right, so, so while you're running that poll, Matt, how did we miss St. Patrick's Day? Like, <laughs> look at Aiden over here. We got the green shirt going on and I had to borrow a button. This is what oh. happened. But man, man. I don't Pause even know seconds. anything about St. Patrick's Day. And the only reason why I'm wearing green right now is because Matt and Kelsey made fun of me yesterday and said I would get pinched if I didn't. And I just didn't want that to happen in front of everybody. So here I am. Okay, there, there Matt has some phony confusion about what green is. Show me the green on the hat, sir, because it's not- There we go. Okay. Uh, it's that, a camouflage. Just so you know, that is weak, Matt. I think that's the only green I own, unfortunately. <laughs> awesome. So I, guys, I'm going to keep this poll open for just five more seconds. Give us a full minute of the poll being up. It looks like uh, votes are starting to slow down and far and away, the majority of people here do have an admin or are an admin themselves. We've got 17%, uh, so a smaller portion of people um, who are, 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 I guess, here to figure out what they need to know about how an admin can help them run their business. Um, but definitely if you've got more specifics you wanna give us besides a yes or no here, I see a lot of folks in the chat, which is really awesome. Um, let us know a little bit more about what you're doing here. It sounds like we've got some uh, client care coordinators who really wanna make the most of their position and really help their team. That is so cool. Clearly your leads hired the right person and you are like a gold star uh, for being here. So that's really awesome. Um, and looks like we've got some people who are, are with workmen or new to workmen. Um, but this is a topic that I am really excited about because at Wise Hire, um, we see people at who they're trying to hire. And one question that our hiring coaches get all the time is who should I hire first, an admin or a salesperson? And well, Denise, I know this is something that you're very passionate about. So we're going to get into the meat of this, but some context for you guys, just a little bit of an overview of kind of how we're gonna guide the conversation. First, we really wanna understand like the pain points, like why is it really hard to run a business without this? Why do you wanna make sure that people are, are working really well? What are the problems with having um, either no admin or somebody who's not operating really well? How can you think about their position and really start to make the most of them? Um, and then we, after we talk about the problem, we're gonna start talking about solutions to it. So we'll dig into the problem. We definitely wanna hear some of the issues that are coming up for you. Let us know if the stuff we're talking about definitely resonates or does not. Um, when we get into the solutions, we're then going to, to think about what your main takeaways are. So I want you guys to keep what your learnings are top of mind and let us know. And, and we'll try to make sure that we're giving you a lot of juicy bits here. So with that being said, Denise, are we ready to talk about the pain points that people have around admins? <laughs> well, you know, I think it's an interesting conversation when we start talking about pain, because what I want to introduce is pain is the beginning of the yes strategy, right? So it is critical that we identify what the pain is. However, I would like to start the conversation to set the context of why businesses exist, right? So there's three main points and they are in this order, but they are so close that you might not see a distinction. So the number one reason a business exists is to build profits. I encourage you take out a pen, take out a piece of paper, because I can't even say that uh, if you didn't have profits, you'd have a nonprofit because nonprofits have donations. And so it's a critical piece that every component, every person in the organization buys into. And I love you keep using this word, um, Aiden, why, 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 why do we exist? So we exist to build profits. The second is to wow our clients and let there be no fake confusion. Your admin is better than you. 
right? Let's just say it. When I win, it is because I've hired an admin that is better than me. And I believe in that piece of it. And they, we are growing together. We're moving together. So, uh, you know, when I think about that piece and where I'm going with it, that admin is that wow factor. And that's what, that's that hidden piece we're going after. And the third reason businesses exist without uh, exception and to every single person in the organization is to fund a life worth living, right? And so if we keep those three components in the top of mind, as we start to have this conversation, then we recognize where we're headed. You know, what, what is the purpose and why are we here? And so let's talk about pain. So as a, as a business owner, um, we understand that as we scale and in order to have more impact, we have to do two things. The first to scale and have impact, you have to be able to have someone to delegate to. Right, look, I just am coming off a trip from New Jersey. Um, on Monday in New Jersey, I woke up at 5 a.m. That is 2 a.m. Pacific Coast time. And I am traveling through the McCarran International Airport at 1.30. I am now up for almost 24 hours. And by the time I get home and get myself settled, it is for sure that um, I've worked 24 hours. My effectiveness running those hours, can I do it? Absolutely. But it's not the most effective way to pull forward and push forward. So many of you on this call right now are feeling that pain today, that you have created opportunities. I don't like to say leads, like, no, you have created opportunities. That's the workman way and offering those. And the very first place that we're gonna go when we have too many opportunities is to a client care coordinator. Like real estate's not magic, it's math. Business not, it, it's math. So the math says that if I'm building profits, the number one opportunity, if I'm doing that, then an admin is the easiest way to keep profits in your organization. Aiden, can you see that? Oh yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. So one thing that you said in one of the conversations we had before this was you were talking about time, money, and effort. And yes. I'd love to hear you unpack those three core principles for the folks that are here right now. Awesome. So that, that drives right into these opportunities, right? When we look at our organization, there is leakage. I promise each and every one of us, there are leads, there are opportunities, people that want to talk to us, but we do not have the time. So what happens? Their real estate need didn't go away. Their business need didn't go away. They just found someone, someone else, which drives directly to money, most importantly, profits. And then it's the magic factor. And, it, and believe this, you write this down because I know I'm about to throw a bomb that you did not expect. And that is business should be fun. Are you on this call and you are hemorrhaging the most important thing there is in life and it's joy. And because you don't have the right client care coordinator, because you have a mindset of scarcity, I can't do it. I want to relook at the commitment you have of a client care coordinator when you're leaking money, right? So I have, let's just play this game that says three people I don't follow up with. Three people I don't follow up with. What is the cost to the company and not following up? 100%. And if your average commission is $9,000 or your average cost of sale is $9,000, that is $27,000. See, we're not looking at the, the metric. We're not measuring it. We're ignoring it. And it is critical to know that even if I lost one of those opportunities, $9,000, what is the difference a client care coordinator can make in that? And so hiring that first position is the right profitable move, move to make, is that client care. Then we're going to move into, you know, buyer's agents, inside sales, showing assistance, other opportunities. Did that answer that? 
I think so. But one thing I'm curious about is for the people here, I wonder how many people, whether you're a client care coordinator or a team lead or, you know, somebody who's just a solo agent right now, um, how many times have you missed on a follow-up? Mm. And uh, like, raise your hand or let us know, like, yeah, for sure. I've missed on follow-ups when I have been a salesperson. There's so many things that fall through the cracks when you've got a million things on your plate. Like, I, I want to hear how, how much this is something that you can really relate to. And I'm curious, maybe what some of the solutions you've had for that are? Is it that you're working 12 hours a day? Is it that you have hired that person that you need? What, what have you guys found to be solutions for those moments where you're like, oh no, I totally dropped the ball on that lead? I, wanna, I think that's, I wanna such an, that's an important question. And I feel radical honesty coming our way. People willing to tell the real truth about what is happening. What a, a great question, because the truth is it's happening in every organization. Yeah, I see a couple of people who've raised their hands. Let's um, do it. So I, it, and I don't see many people coming in the chat. I'm not, I don't blame you if you don't want to pop in the chat. I know it's something that's, that you don't necessarily want to admit to, but I know we're here for a reason. So I'm just temperature checking here. Um, yeah, Jill, you got it. Overwork hours and hours and hours, and you're trying to figure out how to use a person. Okay. So Jill, have you hired somebody already? Or is this, are you trying to figure out how to even find the time to hire somebody right now? Okay, cool. So yeah, even finding the time to train someone, now you've got someone in the play it in, in the seat. How do you make the most of them that this is, this is getting at the juicy bits. Cause sometimes when you have somebody in that seat. Now, now you're uh, a mentor or a, a manager and you want to make sure that you can really help that person get to where you need to go. So um, let's start talking about solutioning. Probably. I think this is a good transition point, Denise. And one thing that you mentioned to me is there are two ways to start thinking about what it means to grow your team and how to start making the most of your time. And these are two D words, delegate, and duplicate. So guys, if you're taking notes, just write down those two words and Denise, unpack how you think about those things. Right. So when I'm looking in my organization, um, if I, if it is able to be delegated, right? So delegated does not require a license. Right now, we have some client care coordinators, some team managers that have licenses, TCs, transaction coordinators that have licenses. So there's no ding on that whatsoever. But when I'm delegating something, I'm looking that for someone that doesn't need a license. So what is the activity? And at Workman Success, we know to scale a business, we are working our top 50. We are working our ABCs of lead management right? We are working our um, daily success habits. And some of those things are able to be done without a license. So those are the things that we want to make sure the skill set of the um, admin is more about the documentation for me in those activities. Uh, if we're talking about top 50, we're talking about building events, and so it's really critical that we have a job description of that client care coordinator, that when we join forces, that everyone's clear on what their role is. And so if I know this is something that I'm going to delegate that doesn't require a license, that I've made clear in the beginning, that's what I'm looking for. Job descriptions. Look, you guys do an incredible job, Aiden, in job descriptions. And so the mindset piece before you start hiring is critical. What's the job description? What do I need? Where's the leakage? What's the job description of the person that can do that best? And that is more often than not a client care coordinator. Now, then we start talking about duplication, right? Um, duplication is I have too many opportunities. I have leads. I have opportunities that a licensed real estate professional needs to do. And so it's critical. It's all in the numbers. It's not magic. It is math. And so those are the two things I'm thinking about. Where is my linkage number one? And what's my fear? It's my mindset. I can't afford it. What if the opportunity goes away and I hired someone? What if that's a lie? 
What if that is absolutely not true when you use a credible system and you follow the system of hiring that person is going to bring profits into your company? And so you as the leader got to shift the mindset. Okay, so for our folks in here who do not yet have an admin, and you know, I, I'm seeing a couple things pop up. It looks like um, Amanda has a full admin team, so we've got a full spectrum, and I want to make sure we can address some useful tidbits for everybody. But let's start with the okay. I don't have an admin yet. How do you know when you need one? Like, what what are some of the key things? Obviously, you're spending way too much time, and you need to get time back on your hands. What are some other obvious indicators? And okay, let me, re the reason why I want to ask this is because usually people don't realize they need some to hire somebody until it's way too late. <laughs> and you have to slow down the business operations in order to bring somebody on the team. So how can people maybe identify sooner that it's time for them to get an admin and avoid the, oh no, I needed this person a month ago. Yeah, it was August of 2009 and I thought I was having a heart attack for sure. I drove myself to the hospital because I didn't want anyone to know the truth. They admitted me. I stayed five days in that hospital, diagnosed with cancer that we determined wasn't true. It was stress. That's how you know. And the opportunity and what's at stake today is not to be there. That is why coaching is so critical. Like I am a great coach for other people. I am a terrible coach for myself. So work with success, you're exactly right. We know what it takes when you're ready for that next step. So let's just talk about, I know I'm about 24 transactions in. And that number, um, you think about you doing, oh, it's only two a month, but everything that comes in before that says that you have enough opportunities right now to take that next step. Um, I'm just going to throw a number out there that means absolutely nothing, just so we can do some math quickly. So I'm a team lead, and I think um, I can't afford $36,000. Well, I can't afford $36,000 this month either. But that's not really what I what the cost is. It's three thousand dollars a month. And so if I'm at twenty four, I have great momentum with me. And so someone that has a stronger skill set in my, than mine in organization, what do you think, Aiden? They can do with twenty four opportunities, because I'll, I'll tell you, there's not a CRM built for sure. There are not. Um, events planned that we can offer our clients. There is not uh, a referral process in place. And so all I'm looking at is, can I recover one transaction this month? And I don't want to forget, and I want to talk back to the um, agents and the business owners and the brokers that have full admin teams. This is to time to have a brutal conversation with yourself is what's the culture of those teams? How's the attrition going? And, and hey, no blame. In this environment, I don't think uh, I came on as a client of Workman Success before I ever was a coach for the company. And I was believing things. And I'll never forget that uh, a couple of things that were said, said to me that were very impactful. The first one, I know you believe that's true, but it's just not. The second is that which you defend, you get to keep. And so for those people that have admin teams in place right now, it how are they operating? What is the culture? Are they delivering the customer care? And this, Aiden, is the thing that you got to take a stand with. I am the problem as the team leader. And it is a problem most likely of mindset, systems, or accountability. It's about transparency and vulnerability. And so I come here today on this call when I could be doing a thousand other things to offer to everyone that we are not meant to do this alone. We are not islands. And so it is critical that we get that in our head first. Then our systems drive through that. 
And then we are held accountable, every single one of us, for the profits that we drive into the company. And remember, that's the conversation, is how do admins build profits? It's because team leaders, business owners, tell themselves the truth about the things that they do well. And they work from this place of abundance, not scarcity, that says together more is possible. And then they, in the beginning, there's an amazing coach here at uh, Workman Success. And she talks about, first it's me, then it's we, then it's you. So in the hiring process, as a team leader, I often think I don't have the time to train someone, so I'll just do it myself, right? That's twisted, but it's the conversations. What are the prices that the people that you care the most about are paying? the missed dinners. How many of you on this call have canceled a vacation, a promise that you made to someone else? That's what's at stake. And that's the opportunity that an admin, the right. And so I wanna say, slow to hire, quick to fire, right? There is a process. And when you lock arms, with wise hire who are experts in this space you white lock arms with workman success which are experts in this space you admit that you're not going to do this alone anymore and you start to change the fabric of your organization Denise you're going so deep this is getting like hitting me in the feels um and I'm sure you guys can relate especially when you're managing a team that it is it really is so personal so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull the rope a little bit back and there were a couple of things that you said in there um that really clearly defined what it is that a um, an admin or a client care coordinator, you know, this umbrella of support staff, what are some of the things that they can do to help increase the business? So a couple of things I heard from you, 24 transactions a year is a really good line in the sand. If you do not have an, a, an admin at this point in time, you're, you're starting to fall behind. Get, get one sooner than 24 transactions a year yep. if you can. Yep. And then some things that admins can do to support you in starting to increase revenue while you're no longer thinking about the little things, implementing and managing a CRM. Yes. And establishing a referral program. Yes. So those are like two obvious things if you are an admin, I hope you're already managing that. If you are, let me know if those are two things that you currently work on right now. Um, CRM management and a referral program. Yep. And you know, that's so big, right? And we lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves. Uh, don't you see the numbers that I'm doing? Don't you see? Hey, I'm, you know, a top 250 agent. Right? Or if you're in that $100,000 club, don't you? I'm making it. But the leakage is enormous. And so, so that, that small shift. And I see Jake saying part time at 24 transactions. And I feel like this is a really good time for us to start to talk about money and what a, what a salary for an admin actually means for you. So Denise, you started doing a little bit of math and calculations for us. Let's continue yep. that conversation and unpack it a little bit more. So if we've got 24 transactions a year and we're hiring an admin, do we want them to be part-time or full-time? How do we need to start thinking about budget for this person? And how much do we need to think about business-wise? How many more transactions should they be helping us in order to, you know, really make it a clear cut, obvious, this is, this is an easy decision for me to make. Yeah, I'll tell you that this year when we were building our strategic plan that, by the way, I had never done until I got to Workman Success. And so when we did that and we started to think about what is the conduit by which we are going to increase our profits in the company, it was very simple. It was top 50. And so what we uh, laid the groundwork for was this one referral, every client, every year, one referral, every person in my top 50 every year. Now uh, we, we can talk later about what a top 50 is, but I think you're getting a picture in your mind what the top 50 is. Um, asking ourselves, why are people not referring us? 
right? When we talk about the friction of what's happening in the marketplace, we talk about Zillow, Realtor.com. We talk about the competitive nature of online marketing. Um, like, how about we just make it easy? And easy is we dig into our top 50 and using an admin to manage that, to partner with me as I'm going through that when I show up, there's a list. So, well, let's just do the math. What if only 25% of the 50 people that I'm working with because of the uh, system that the admin brought to the table gave me a transaction? I'm at 50, 25%. That 60, that six transactions. Don't you think that's pretty low? These are 50 people that love me. And the only reason they are not referring me is because I'm not in contact with them. I'm not asking, I'm not follow, following up. And frankly, I don't care. Cash and checks. And so if hiring an admin, singularly, that was one portion of their job, and we said the commission was $9,000, and they generated six more transactions for you, we're in the clear. That means they didn't do anything else, nothing. See, that's how easy this is. You know, that keeping it simple and this is why it's critical that you have these uh, radical, honest conversations with yourself. So yes, when you say 24, I say full-time. I say you put them into top 50, you put them into your CRM, because when you start to tell yourself the truth, the leakage is enormous. The things that you are not saying no, yes to in business, opportunities you're not creating, and I got another deep comment on that, but if I've been deep, I'm going to stop right now, right? Because really, you're putting people at risk that need jobs. Maybe. So, what do you think? Guys, pop in the chat here. I want to know what you guys are hearing from this and, and if there's more depth that you'd like to hear out of what should an admin be spending their time doing? Because we're, we're definitely kind of covering covering a lot of bases here. And I want to start talking about like what you should be looking for in an admin and okay. how you go about hiring them. Yep. Um, but I don't want to move on from this topic until I know that there's, there's Clarity. people getting their questions answered. Um, Let me throw so out a couple other things why it's happening that I think that an admin does. Mm -hmm. um, my calendar, mm -hmm. right? My calendar is critical that especially as you are scaling like, look, I missed a flight from New Jersey back to Las Vegas because I'm in charge of my calendar right now. And uh, just to make you super happy, I have a preview happening right now from an applicant from Wise Hire, and they are here hearing this conversation with us. Cool. And um, I need them now. Mm -hmm. the, the honest conversations that she and I have been having about what her skill sets are. So making sure that my calendar is clear so that I'm time blocking. Right. So that someone doesn't take over my calendar, usually me for the record. Right. So that's definitely one of the things it is to be sure that there is uh, accountability back from people. So you have team standards in place. I set the standard and the admin make sure that it, uh, they are inspecting what I expect and they're able to identify for me where holes are that I need to jump in. It's not for them to identify to jump in. But if I've got four listing appointments today that are going on and I've got an agent going rogue over here, that team admin has my back. And so those are a couple of other things that go into it, into this uh, real estate. It's not magic. It's math. That person that's really watching that and making sure just from this place of care, right? You told me what you wanted and why you wanted it. And so I'm just going to stand here while you get it, but left to their own devices, uh, people that are great in real estate are typically not great in the documentation piece. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, I, I, I think I'll leave that up to the audience to determine. I, I, I won't make any statements here. Um, but for the admins that are in the audience, I think what you can get out of what Denise just said, is, and I definitely for, for team leads as well, 
hold your manager accountable. Yes. <laughs> this, like make sure they're following through on their promises. This is something that I have definitely heard a variety of people at Workman say. Um, but if you're making sure that your manager is accountable for doing their job, that is a part of your job. Um, I'm really curious to Faith mentioned something in the chat here. Um, she's got too many clients and not enough inventory. What like does do admins have a role in helping support this? What do you what do you think about that? Oh, I love that question. So uh, every day I'm looking for buyers for my listings and listings for my buyers. And so that means during lead generation time that I need to have in place, uh, the number or the access points for me to get to people, right? So we're, my job is to sort, not to convince. So what the admin's going to do is to make sure when I show up today, agents show up today on every listing that we have, um, that we have phone lists available for us to make calls. It is a waste of my time to have that. They've uploaded those in Mojo. So literally I'm clicking a button. And then when it's going under contract, they're reminding me, hey, Denise, this is happening. Once it's sold, hey, Denise. And then in addition, one of the things that we do that's spectacular is we do business to business calls. So they'll create a list for me of business owners near my listing and give me their phone numbers because I'm picking up the phone calling and saying, hey, do you need some more clients? because I have more transactions. So then on the buyer's side, they have, um, they've been out. We don't show property, we sell property. But in this process, that means they found a neighborhood and a floor plan they love. The admin is going to work to get me more phone numbers, contacts, and emails in that area. And if I can't get those, then I'm knocking on doors that I currently have a buyer in that neighborhood. And there are, it is um, crazy to think that in our marketplace right now in Las Vegas, that we only have 2000 listings. I assure you, there are plenty of sellers that are asking themselves questions like, is it time should I buy? But they're listening to social media, they're listening to the news and think it's not the time. So the admin is going to get us access in a very clear and concise way, such that my two hours aren't spent in getting the data, but getting, sorting, getting to the conversations that agents should be having. This is the stuff that I was so eager to hear. I feel like that's some really, really juicy examples. I, I hope that you guys are getting some value out of it. You're, you're saying, help me in making my job easier. Build me a list. I'll make the phone calls. Yes. Get me in the door. I'll, I'll do the talking. So get, you get your admins to, and if you are an admin, I, I don't want to act like you guys aren't here. Set the foundation so that way the salespeople can do the talking, but like help with the, the basics. So well, and now, can I just add one thing yeah. to that real quick? Um, when I'm doing the hiring and if you're the admin, so I'm speaking directly to you, ask that person, what's your vision? Mm. Where do you see the company in five years? How can I support that? And when they tell you those things, you hold them accountable. This is a partnership. This is a skill set, and you have every right and you demonstrate care when you have the courage in the right way, in the right framework to sit down and say, hey, Denise, this is what you said you wanted. And I'm noticing this is what you're doing. And I just want to remind you the people at stake when you don't stay true to what you said that you wanted. I love it. Okay. We have only 15 minutes left. And I know there are a lot of questions that people are asking that are really, really great. Before we start diving into people's questions, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about hiring because Denise, when we talked last week, you told me a really wild story about how you're currently hiring and we have barely even touched on it so far. Right. So tell me a little bit about how you go about hiring somebody to, to help support your team what is it that you're thinking about? What kind of characteristics are you looking for? And how are you identifying those? So the first thing that I'm going to say is I use the workman way. 
It has been proven to be successful. Now, what we talk about is that spend six months doing it that way and then bring in your creativity to it. So I'm going to talk about my creativity be, because wise hire is a big part of that. And you guys do a fabulous job of putting people in front of me. I want to tell you that I use wise hire in three different areas. The one is admin, the one is recruiting agents to my team. And the third one is to building a downline within my organization. So wise hire, I'm telling you, get on, I'm getting paid nothing. I get nothing for saying wise hire, but I am here because someone told me. Jim Knowlton cared enough, Christy Buck. And so I'm here to share what's happening in, in that for me. So I have three ads that are currently running. I have in some of those ads, five to 10 applicants and other uh, ones, I have 30 or 40 applicants and that's a lot. And I don't have that kind of time. So I want to dig in. So first and foremost, the disc. If someone is unwilling to do the disc, I cannot make the right decision if they have the uh, traits, um, the tendencies, the skill set emotionally to fit me. And so in my job, I'm looking a lot. So if I'm looking for an admin, I'm not looking for another driver. I do not need a driver. I'm going to tear them apart. I definitely do not need an eye, right? My eye, and it's happening right now, who I'm previewing, first came in as an admin. As I started to hear what she wanted, she's really more an inside salesperson. And that's what her discs say. If they don't fill out the disc, that is, this is the honeymoon, people. They're not going to do that. Wait till what they won't do in the job. So maybe I'm more, uh, you know, just cut it at, uh, off right there, but that's what I do. Now, the next thing I do is I think a creative genius thing is I wanted to get through these people and we work in a business uh, that is technology. So I don't need you to be an expert at the technology I'm doing, but I need you to be curious. I need you to be willing to take a risk and not need to be right. And so I send them an email through my dashboard that says, hey, I'm so excited that you applied. We are a real estate company in a technology, fit, in a technology uh, environment. So what I want to hear from you is in one to two minutes, why do you want to work on my team? And then also, what's a fun fact? I give them a link to our Facebook. I give them a link to our website. And oh my gosh, I have had four of the most incredible people and the videos are hysterical. One of them said, the fun fact is, this is my 15th take before I sent this to you and I just sent it, right? And so this is cream rising, right? We did a disc, we took some risk. I don't know about you, but that sets my soul on fire. And I want to find three more positions I can hire all four of those people for. And so, by the way, share the wealth. If you're getting people through Wise Hire, you're hiring one and there's three other ones, share that gift with another team leader you have. This is, we're, we're getting into some really great tips. So if you guys heard this, what Denise does when she's hiring people is ask them to submit a video. So I, I wonder how many people have done that before, if that's a totally new idea for you, um, because that is really cool, especially if you want this person to be customer facing, getting them to submit a video means that you're going to get a sense of how they talk, how they present themselves. Do you want this person in front of customers and start to get to know them? And that's a lightweight way before you start investing time in the interview process, because the interview process, if you've gone through hiring before, you know that that is really, really time consuming um, and can take a lot of energy. And I know that that's one of your big concerns as a team lead, as somebody who's running a business, you, you don't have all the time to, to interview dozens of candidates. So how many people should, one question that I always have is how many people do I need to think about in my hiring funnel? How many people do I want to apply? How many people do I want to get to do some type of screening or assessment? How many people do I want to talk to on the phone? And then how many people do I want to interview before I make my decision? Think of that as a funnel, the same way you think about getting leads and closing new business. Well, the, what, what I would say that piggybacks exactly on what you're saying is when I say yes to one thing, I say no to everything else. 
Hmm. As a team leader, as a client care, we are always looking for talent, always. And so, you know, that's what's so awesome with Wise Hires. I get to stay in this process with you and you're doing the heavy lifting for me. And so I am always looking for talent. So whether it is um, that I can scale my business again, because I've identified talent as a, a client care coordinator or an admin, I can scale my business again because, oh my gosh, look at this amazing person that is getting their real estate license and they want to work with one of you because they recognize the value in um, working in a team. So I think your at, job, at, job ads are always up. You're always hiring and you are always looking for talent, but that's just me. Yeah. If you are somebody, especially if you already have an admin team and you know that you're constantly hiring for this, or you're always on the lookout for new people to contribute to your team, this is definitely something Wise Hire can help with. And especially in refreshing your ads to make sure that they're actually top of the job boards. So um, I feel like we could we could have a spin-off conversation or multiple spin-off conversations from this. How do you manage your hiring process could be a whole other call. I'd, if you guys are interested in that, raise your hand if you'd like to see what are good ways to manage an interview process, what are good ways to manage your job ads. Um, and we can have a spin-off conversation about that. Um, and dive into some juicy bits. But in the last 10 minutes that we have, we have gotten so many good questions and I wanna make sure that we can touch on some of the questions that we haven't been able to address just yet. So Matt, I know that you were helping us monitor some of the ones that were coming into the chat. Can you pose some of those questions to Denise? Yeah, totally. Let me, uh, let me pull it up. Uh, let's see, uh, I don't recall who had asked this, but hi, Denise, how do you feel about hiring an exec assistant prior to having the business? So um, online, offline conversations, it depends on who you are, right? If you are a rainmaker, which I am, right? You put me in any environment, I'm going to create opportunities. Um, you're that person, I think, with uh, the guidance of if you don't have a coach, which you should, uh, your broker to have a very honest conversation of what that looks like. I think it is a conversation you could have. If you are a new agent in the business, um, that is a way for you to um, divert the things that you don't want to do, that you don't want to master. I say no. And this is what I always think about. We all know a kid, right? We have one, we know one, and they come home from school today and they say, hey, look, mom, or hey, look, dad, I, I was at school today and I really didn't dig math, right? It, it's, I don't think it's going to be my thing. I don't ever see me really being able to use it. So, hey, I'm not going to do that today. Now, we all know what the answer would be, would be, of course, you are going to do that. So often when I hear someone ask this question, it's because they don't want to master something that they don't like to do. And in an industry that 94% of people will not make it, that is a bad strategy. So again, rainmaker, offline conversation, uh, have someone to spill into, to have an honest conversation about where these opportunities are. So I own the, um, the school contract with the largest uh, school district in the nation to be the team that um, advises on real estate as it impacts retirement. And so that was huge. When I got that contract, before transactions came, I had to do hiring. But I can see the direct correlation to it. I knew that 30 transactions would come from it. Jim Knowlton and I had a lot of conversations about it. And so I made that decision. But that is a, a one-off conversation. Don't have it with yourself. And on the other side of the coin, become a master at this business. And I assure you, you will defy the odds. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to give you a time limit on our next question, Denise, because okay. I want to make sure that we can plug in some stuff before we have to close off here. Okay. Um, but Beth asked, what kind of referral program? We were saying that admins should manage a referral program. What does that mean? What are some ways that people can think about that and how can they get an admins to support it? How long do I have to speak on that? I'm gonna give you two minutes, Max. Two minutes, watch the clock. Cause I, 
This is big. So the referral program is the thing that I believe puts the least amount of friction into your business. And so uh, we use a spreadsheet that these 50 names are in. They've got phone numbers and they've got email addresses. And so really the way to get a referral, it's very clear, right? You ask and you follow up and you think and you have events. All business is this, write this down. All business is relationships and all relationships are shared experiences. And so the admin is going to make sure that I'm making it through my 50 every single month. In addition to that, we're going to do events that they're going to be invited to. So an event that we're doing right uh, this year is a um, talk about real estate on Tuesdays. So my admin is going to arrange the taco shop that we're going to do. They're going to make sure that we have sponsors in place. They're going to make sure that the invitations go out and that I follow up with the phone call and the invite. So the most amount of work lays on their shoulders for me to do the least amount of work, which is have fun, invite people to lunch and have a conversation. So we want to do what's called, an, we use an agile and a sprint. It's brilliant. I had never heard of it until I got to Workman Success. And so the, I know I'm at two minutes. All right, I'm done. Okay. Agile and sprint. We're putting that in round two. Okay, guys. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, last thing, last question um, from Flint here. He's saying um, if he doesn't have an admin, is there a way to, a de to decide what they should do right away? And he said, manage a CRM call schedule referral program that we already mentioned sounds amazing. You just talked about how event coordination factors into referrals. What else can people think about as far as duties like from, you know, 30, 60, 90 days? And I know Workman has a big plan about this, but what what's the first thing that they can start working on? Right. So everyone's business is different. So we want to do an AMP scorecard, which you put that on the list to talk about again. So an AMP scorecard is going to identify where your leakage is. So I can't say uh, what specifically because everyone's different. So we got to do an AMP scorecard. We have to identify where your leakage is and we're going to begin to rate this a thousand down to 10 and we're going to hit the thousands. I believe in a quarter, you should be looking at three things. And so you've got to see where's the biggest opportunity for you to gather revenue and profits, return on investment. And that's always going to be a top 50. Always, always, always. Okay. I hope that you guys had your questions answered here and you feel like you are coming away with something that's really actionable. And I'd really love people to throw in the chat right now. If there's one thing you're going to do for your business mm. that you've learned in this conversation, what is it? What are your takeaways? I'm so curious to hear um, and see if there's something that you feel like you can go and do now based on what you've heard today. Throw them in the chat. Let's see. Let's see. I'm dying here. such a great conversation because this is a, you've traded your time for this. <laughs> so you've got to put it in action. What, what will move your business forward? Just 1%. That's what you're, that's the question. Yeah. One referral per top 50 clients per year. This sounds like a, that one's a big one. Two people mentioned that. It is. So as people are throwing your, your takeaways into the chat, there's one thing I want to plug here, um, which is that we are doing the first of its kind real estate team building survey at Wise Hire. So this is um, something we're going to be surveying as many real estate teams as we can across the country to figure out what team structures are the most productive. So obviously admins fit into this. Um, we would love it if you guys could take this survey. It's only 10 to 15 minutes to fill out. Um, and it's also going to get a talk uh, a lot about, you know, how are you running your team post COVID? What does it mean to be remote now in our changed world? Um, and we're gonna be compiling all of these answers into a really, really thorough report. Um, so please submit the survey to us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, when you complete the survey, you're gonna get a $40 gift card. So absolutely <laughs> time is money. We're gonna pay you for doing this. We wanna make sure that we can really build a complex picture of what it means to run a real estate business and what that business can look like organizationally. Um, so if you can fill out that survey, that'd be great. 
If you want to use Wise Hire, we do have a workman discount that you can get. It's going to be $179 a month instead of $199 a month. Um, if you've got questions about Wise Hire, our team is definitely happy to help you out, but you can find it at that link, wisehire.com slash workman success. And Matt has plugged the survey link into the chat. So thank you for, for, uh, for filling that out for us in advance. Denise, anything you want to plug while we still are on the call? Yeah, the only thing that I would say is let the uh, stay in your lane, right? This is wise hires lanes. Coaching is workman success. Do not reinvent the will. I had to subjugate my ego for, for a really big gift that said my name does not need to be on the billboard. In order to serve, I serve regardless of opportunity. And I promise you, if you make this commitment to your business to be in partnership and stay in your lane, which your lane is to serve clients that want to buy and invest and sell in real estate, that together more is possible. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to share. And um, I hope to see everyone in the real estate world uh, beat Zillow. <laughs> awesome. Denise, it was so much fun okay. talking to you. It looks like people really got a lot out of this. I am so excited that all of you guys joined us. Thank you so much for being here. Um, there will be a recording of this, so uh, that'll be sent out via email to you guys uh, who have signed up. So look out for that if you want to rewatch anything or, or double back on notes. Um, our emails are going to be in that. So if you want to contact Matt, Denise, or I, hit us up. We love, we love talking to you. So thanks so much for joining us.